Welcome to this video by Perfect Scores on Biology. This is Preetinder Kaur and so far we have done the structure of DNA and the processes of replication, transcription and translation. So what we are going to cover in this video is going to be enzymes, their structures and the different sites on them. So starting with an enzyme, what is an enzyme? Enzyme is nothing but a globular protein. That increases the rate of biochemical reactions. Increases the rate of biochemical reactions by lowering the activation energy threshold. So there is an activation energy threshold that means. A minimum amount of energy is needed to activate the reaction. That minimum amount is reduced by this globular protein, which is an enzyme. So, threshold. Thus, it acts as a biological catalyst or a biocatalyst. On enzymes, usually on the surface, there is a site known as active site. This is on the surface of the enzyme. and it binds to the substrate molecule. So we are going to do that, how the binding is done. So it binds to the substrate molecule. Now there is a concept that we are going to study that is enzyme substrate specificity. So let's go ahead and do that process. So in enzyme substrate specificity, there is an active site. So the active site and the substrate, they complement each other. In terms of shape and chemical properties. That means they have got opposite charges. Now binding to the active site, it brings the substrate into close physical proximity. Binding brings the substrate into close physical proximity and this gives rise to a complex known as enzyme substrate complex. Now the enzyme in this complex it catalyzes the conversion of the substrate into the product or the products and this gives rise to an enzyme product complex. So the process is that on the enzyme the substrate is binded and that forms enzyme substrate complex and then the conversion is done and then it becomes an enzyme product complex. Now enzyme is not consumed in the reaction so it can continue to work again once this product dissociates. So only low concentrations of enzymes are needed for that. Because the enzymes do not get used up. So let's go ahead and draw a diagram for that. So in these four diagrams what you can see are the enzymes. And we are going to explain the process, what happens one by one. So right now there is the enzyme and this is going to be the substrate which is coming towards the enzyme. The next step is going to be the enzyme substrate complex. Okay, so this is just the enzyme and this is the substrate. 
So it's going to look like this. The next step is that it will become enzyme product complex. So let's suppose this is the product. And the next step is again the enzyme and the product will get separated. So this is the product that gets separated. So this kind of a model is known as a lock and key model. Why is this model named in such a way? Because of the specificity. Now enzymes and substrates, they share specificity. That means a given enzyme will only interact with a small number of specific substrates that complement the active site. Now, this explanation of this interaction between the enzyme and the substrate is described as lock and key. That means a lock opens only in response to a specific key. Now, lots of factors affect the enzyme activity, and we're going to do them. The first important factor that affects the activity of enzymes is temperature. The low temperatures result in insufficient thermal energy for the activation. So if the temperature is low, it is insufficient to generate energy. Increasing the temperature increases the speed and the motion. It increases the speed and the motion of both enzyme and the substrate. So there is higher enzyme activity. This is because a higher kinetic energy will be there. And this higher kinetic energy will result in more frequent collisions between enzyme and substrate. At an optimal temperature, which is different for different enzymes, at an optimum temperature, the rate is going to be at the peak. But if the temperature exceeds too much, the enzyme stability will decrease. It will become unstable because the thermal energy, which is more than the optimum amount, that will disrupt the hydrogen bonds that are holding the enzyme together. And this causes the enzyme to lose the shape. And there is loss of enzyme activity and this process is known as denaturation when the nature is lost. So that is the effect of temperature. So if you want to draw a graph between the activity and the temperature, it's going to look like this. So it's increasing slowly and this would be the optimum temperature. This is the peak of the activity and then it will start decreasing in stability as well. And this process is the denaturation. So that is factor number one, which is temperature. Factor number two that affects the activity of enzymes is pH. So that is the second factor. Now changing the pH can alter the charge of the enzyme. So change in pH can change the charge of the enzyme. This in return will change the protein solubility and it can also change the shape of the molecule. The changing the shape or the charge of the actor site, it will reduce the ability to bind. So removing its function. Now again enzymes have an optimum pH and that differs from enzymes to enzymes and moving outside of this range will always result in a diminished rate of reaction. The third important factor is substrate concentration. Now increasing the concentration will increase the activity of the enzyme. More substrate means increased likelihood of the colliding 
or the collision between the enzyme and substrate. That means more reactions. And that means more products. But the graph in this case is also like this. That means after a certain point of time, the rate of reaction will not rise. So instead of this, this would be for temperature. This is going to be for substrate concentration. So after a while, the concentration, uh, no matter how much it increases, the rate of reaction will still be the same. Because the environment, it becomes saturated with substrate and all the enzymes they are bound and they are reacting so that are that is uh, an idea of the factors that affect enzyme activity so let me revise it once again for temperature the graph would be like this for ph also the graph would be like this and for substrate the graph would be like this so coming back to the topic of denaturation what is denaturation it's a structural change in a protein So denaturation is a structural change in the protein. It results in loss of biological activities and usually it is permanent in nature. That means enzyme cannot go back to the original shape or activity. Heat and pH are two important agents that can bring about denaturation. So let's suppose a functional protein is coiled like this. So this would be a functional protein. When it becomes denatured, it becomes like this. So it cannot perform its functions in a proper manner. That is what denaturation looks like. Now we are going to study one specific enzyme and a few of its applications and that enzyme is lactase. A very important enzyme that is used to digest milk. So what happens in case we want to produce lactose free milk? That means for people who are not tolerant for lactose, who are not able to digest lactose because they do not have the enzyme lactase in them. So we need to filter out some lactase with them and what is done is milk is taken that contains lactose sugar that is poured over a container that has beads in them so these are the beads. So milk is poured from here and these beads they absorb all the lactase. So what you get as a result is lactose free milk. Now coming to the structure of lactose, lactose which is the sugar, it's a disaccharide of glucose and galactose. It can be broken down by the enzyme lactase. Historically, mammals, they have a decrease in lactase production after weaning. And that leads to lactose intolerance. This incidence is very high in Asian, African, Native American and Aboriginal populations. So lactose-free milk can be produced by purifying lactase. That can be done from the help of a yeast or a bacteria. And then it can be bound to an inert substance. For example, these beads. These are known as alginate beads. So milk is passed over this immobilized enzyme. And then it becomes lactose-free. Now the generation of this lactose-free milk can be used in a number of ways. First of all, as a source of milk for people who are intolerant to lactose. As a means to increase the sweetness of milk. So you do not need to add artificial sweeteners. Now, as compared to lactose, the result, the actual sugars, that is glucose and galactose, are much, much sweeter in flavor. So, they can be used to increase the sweetness of milk. It can be used to prevent or reduce crystallization of ice creams. Because glucose and galactose, again, they are more soluble than lactose. So, crystallization 
of ice creams can be reduced. Another example of the use would be shortening the production time for yogurt or cheese production because the bacteria, they ferment glucose and galactose much more readily than they ferment lactose. So shortening the production time for yogurt and cheese. So that is one example of an enzyme that is very important for the human body. And that is all that we'll be covering in this video. So we have done what are enzymes and we've done one specific example which is lactase enzyme. So I hope the video was useful. Thank you so much for watching it. And don't forget to visit us at perfect-scores.com to share and like our page and also to send us your valuable suggestions at the Gmail address. So thank you so much for watching this video.